In this one, I'm going to do a simple landscape using negative space painting techniques. Every good painting starts out with a nice loose drawing. The more details you put in, the more tight that painting will become. So I keep it loose. I just hit the main edges and I let everything else take care of itself once the paint hits the paper. I'm going to mix up a little bit of neutral here, probably in the you know mid-range, so nothing too light, nothing too dark. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water to it, a little bit of blue, and do a tea-like mixture to the sky area. Uh, this needs to be pretty pale at this point. Um, again, you know, with most watercolor painting, we work light to dark. So I'll start out very light, and I use a the hairdryer there to speed up the process. Got to be careful with a hairdryer. Um, you can kind of use those on a really wet wash and it'll push the paint around and maybe cause some cauliflowering. But for a sky like that, it's, it's just fine. Now I'm using those neutrals to lay in a, some hills. So this will silhouette the white buildings. Um, kind of basically negative space painting the top of the buildings at this point. Uh, note too that as I'm doing this wash, I'm leaving some specks of the paper. That is a 140 pound cold press Fabriano Artistico. Um, it's good to you know, just leave a few of those white flecks. It just gives the painting a nice crisp look. Now just to mix it up a little bit, I did put a little bit of yellow ochre into some of that gray wash and that's just going to keep it from looking so flat. Uh, now I'm using some very thinned out uh, cadmium red light. And I'm putting a little bit of ochre in that as well for the same exact reason. I don't, you don't want your washes to dry flat. If you use the same hue, it's going to be flat. I even put some dark grays in there uh, just to suggest some shadows. Now I'm using some cerulean blue uh, mixed with a little bit of ultramarine. And just going back and forth over the paper, really light strokes. I'm not pressing too hard. And I want, and I'm doing that so again we get that um, some of the white of the paper to show. I think uh, you know, kind of similar to what we did in the mountains. Um, that's going to give that painting a nice crisp, you know, relaxed look. Notice too, I left some whites of the paper, so those will eventually become boats. I didn't really plan a lot of that out. Um, again, I kind of like to have an idea of what I want to do, and then sort of take it as it comes. And so for me, adding uh, three or four boats there was pretty easy. I felt like that was a pretty good arrangement of shapes. And now I'm moving into the rooftops. So the rooftops uh, are a mix of cad red light, a little bit of burnt sienna, and plenty of water. I want those red rooftops to pop. But if you go too saturated, it's just going to um, stand out a little bit too much because those buildings are going to be white. So if they were sitting on a darker background or something not so pale, uh, then we could have probably pushed the saturation a little bit. Now I'm moving in with some shadows, keeping it consistent uh, with or simplified with the hues. I'm just using the same gray that I used for the mountains. I just added a little bit of water into it. I figure since the buildings were white, I wanted that value to be a little bit lighter uh, than the buildings or than the distant hills. Now I'm just, you know, again, just kind of bouncing around. I don't have any you know, preconceived idea of the buildings either. I just know I wanted a kind of a mass of white buildings. I figure once you start putting in a few shadows, uh, the rest will take care of itself. You just sort of look at what you've got and then just create the uh, next stroke based on what you see. That's just trusting your judgment a little bit. That's also having a little bit of background uh, with design, composition, understanding balance, and so on. Now I'm using a small pointed round, the tip of the brush, and you know, creating some dots. The dots obviously suggest windows, but they also do another thing that's very interesting that I think a lot of people don't see if you don't you know, understand exactly you know, how it works. Um, you have in a landscape or really any painting, you have large shapes, medium shapes, small shapes. Um, so this is a, you know, a combination of all the above. So you got the kind of the mass of the buildings, which is a large shape, the water, that's a large shape. And then you have some medium shapes with the hills and maybe a few of the boats. But then those little dots of the windows uh, really sort of balance everything out. They make 
uh, the painting more interesting because you have a combination of shapes. Now I'm using a small liner brush, adding some dark notes. Uh, that just suggests some shadows, maybe some dark rooftops. And uh, a few verticals are nice uh, since we have a landscape layout. Uh, things tend to kind of pull your eye left to right. So adding a few verticals there. Uh, again, we'll kind of break up that movement. So now you have some uh, movement that's going bottom to top or top to bottom, however your eye moves. And just like that, we have a negative space landscape. So the negative space is basically using the distant hills to shape the buildings. I also use the shadows on the buildings to suggest corners and shapes of other buildings. So negative space painting is basically painting the background or the area around an object. And I'm going to accent those buildings and the rooftops a little bit more just by adding some darks there on the base of the hills. And that will finish it off. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.